right outside my window. 35 drunken verses of Danny Boy, then she spent 20 minutes trying to talk this guy into going home with her. I didn't hear a thing. I was about to beg him to go home with her just to shut her up. Well, why don't you ask Chrissy if we can move into another room? I'd rather move out altogether. I'd love a place like PJ's got, you know, quiet, no neighbours for half a K. Well, he's got a spare room. Why don't you move in with him? Yeah, right. I can really see PJ going for that. Well, why wouldn't you? I get up his nose. You do not. Mount Thomas 208 receiving. Report of a disturbance at Abbott Supermarket in Hope Road, Mount Thomas. Copy VKC, on our way. Get him out of here! All right, mate, come on. Why don't you come outside with me? <laughs> hey! This half wit arrested and charged. Okay, well, stop shouting. Can't you see you're frightening him? He's gonna wreck my shop. Hi, Honorable Joe. Clint. Have you got the milk and Vicky yet, True? Great, now I've got two of them scaring off the customers. Clint, did you know him? He was taking aid at getting the milk and Vicky. The Mr. Barn told me to get him. Come on, Trev, let's go back to work. Yeah, go on. Get oh, out. Oh. Lovely. Please. Uh, Trevor, my name's Joe. I'm a friend of Clancy's. Carnival Joe do your knife, Trim. Clever, isn't it? Yeah. When you turn it, the, the wheels get, got teeth on the end and, and you turn the handle and make the mixes go round. <laughs> Can I see? Can I have a look at it? Wonder how people invent things like this, huh? That's easy. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Should we go outside for a little while? Yeah? Okay. You go, Trev. I'll be down in a minute. I want you out of I've here. I've got to get the milk and Vicky. Or Trev will get in trouble. Get out! Ow! Hey! What did you just do? No, nothing. She hurt me. What's going on? Uh, Sarge, this is Trevor Harvey and Chantelle Forster. She called us to the supermarket where Trevor was... Causing a bit of trouble. A bit. People like him should be supervised. Miss Forster, just pull up, okay? Anyway, once we'd uh, sorted it all out, she allegedly assaulted Clancy. Oh, for God's sake. She hurt me on my arm, Dad and Tess. This is absolutely ridiculous. I can't believe you're treating me like a criminal. Got a big bruise, Dad and Tess. Give me a look, Clancy. That wasn't me. Yeah, I doubt a bruiser come out that far, Sarge. You see, he's a liar. All right, you can go now, Miss Foster. Thank you. I'd like to know who's going to pay for the damage to my supermarket. You're entitled to make a complaint in relation to the damage, but you'll have to make an official statement. How long will that take? Well, I'm going to have to take Trevor and Clancy back to work first. Yeah. You'll have to assess the damage. Uh, if Trevor is charged, you'll probably have to go to court. Um, Forget it. I've wasted enough time already. Can you really take her back to work? Uh, yeah, sure, Clint. I'd like to know about that bruise first. I fell over. I fell over that door. Don't make me tell you what really happened. Why? Mr. Barn will get mad if I tell. You see your boss? He told Trevor to come straight back with the milk and Vicky. He told me to come straight back with Trevor and the milk and Vicky. We've been a long time. Oh, all right, all right, Clance. Yep, take him back to work. Have a word to his boss. Yeah. Okay, guys, come on. Okay. Come on. What about the milk and Vicky? I'll grab some from here for you. Let's wait for Constable Joe in the car. Yeah, well, how's Clancy? Uh, who knows? Hey, hang on, that's all we got. Yeah, sorry. Clancy needs it. I can drink it black. Put up with worse. Hey, um, how's it going living at Peach's place? Oh, that's right. Oh, a couple of old bachelors rattling around the place. Probably do with a woman's touch. Yeah, yeah probably. Oh, I can't see PJ going along with that, though. Oh, I don't think he'd mind. If he was talking about getting someone else in. Really? Yeah, well, he mentioned it once. A girl? Not specifically, but I don't think he'd have any objection to the idea. Oh, there they are. Thank you. Oh, Joe, leave us one Sorry. at least. We didn't get chocolate one with the barn, but they are good. Trevor tried one and thought he'd I. The yummy. Yeah, well, that's fine, Clancy. But I'm still not happy about what happened to the supermarket. The manager intimidated Trevor and was rough with Clancy. It wasn't their fault. We'll get back to work. We'll talk about it later, eh? Come on, Trev. Hey, Stephen, could you give me a hand, Ruth? Yeah, I'll give you a sec, OK? You go down there and I'll be down there in a minute, all right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Try and do the right thing by him. You know, give him a bit of responsibility. Is there any damage that needs to be paid for? 
Ah, well, that's between you and the supermarket manager now, but she hasn't made a complaint. Oh, well, that's something. Mr. Barnes, a planter. Uh, hey, hey, what did I tell you? I told you about this shortly. Now go. Off you go. Uh, Clancy has got some very bad bruising on his arm. Do you have any idea how that could have happened? No. Did you ask him? He uh, said you'd be mad if you told. That's not what I said. Look, he could be covering for Trevor. Why? You think he caused the bruise? Well, yeah, it's possible. Why would he do that? Oh, well, you know, he's a bit feral. In what way? Well, violent. You know, unpredictable. I've had a lot of problems with him. I don't know how his mother comes. He wouldn't do it deliberately. Trevor thinks the world of Clancy. But he has been having violent spells recently. He's not a bad boy constable. He's not aggressive. It's just that sometimes he hits out when he gets upset. Does this happen often? Since my husband died, there have been a few times. He was close to his dad, was he? They were always together. We used to have our own business. And Trevor used to work there? Sweeping up, taking out the rubbish and the like. Simple stuff. But... Trevor, why are you home? Trevor, it's all right. You're not in trouble. They just want to find out how Clancy hurt his arm. I don't know about that. I, I, I just... I got told to go home because I do too many wrong things. What did you do? Trevor, why are you home? Mr Barnes said he... He said, go home, you do too many wrong things. All right. I just don't believe for a second that Trevor would hurt Clancy. They seem like the best mates. He probably wouldn't mean to, but if he's out of control, he could lash out at someone like he did me. Yeah, that's because you're a threat. Just like Mr Barnes is a threat. That's his boss, right? Mm. Joe, have you done the report yet? Yeah, uh, no, I've been kind of busy. So am I. I ended it yesterday. <sighs> he's a control freak scumbag. Hey, he's got a heavy deadline for a hand-up brief. No, not PJ Barnes. He sent Trevor home as punishment. The poor guy was devastated. Yeah, but if he's out of control, Barnes is probably justified. Well, I reckon he's the one who hurt Clancy. He's blaming poor Trevor, who's too afraid of defending Clancy. Uh, it's nothing serious, boss. A bad bruise on his arm. What happened? He's not telling us. Well, did you ask him? It's not exactly difficult to get the truth. No, he's not talking, boss. Could be protecting a mate. Or not. Bring him in to see me, will you? I don't remember. Are you trying to tell me you don't remember something hitting you that hard? I do forget things sometimes. Mr Barnes told Constable Joe that Trevor did it. No. It wasn't him. How do you know if you can't remember? It wasn't his fault. OK, come on. Tell me what happened. Trevor was hammering and the top came off and hit me in the arm. He didn't mean to. I see. You won't tell me the band I told, will you, Daniel Crawdon? Why not? He did I'd get into big trouble if I tell. Are you really accepting the word of someone like Clancy over me? We've never had reason to doubt his word before. Yeah? Well, he's lying now. Why would he when he's so eager to win your approval? I don't know. Mr Barnes, did you send Trevor home because of the accident this morning? <sighs> no. He was acting up. I told him not to return until he was prepared to do some work. So basically, you've got your workers right where you want them. Sometimes I have to be strict. I mean, come on. Imagine what would happen if the lunatics took over the asylum. Yeah. Could be a lot worse than tools flying around the place, couldn't it? Yeah, that's right. So you admit Clancy was hurt by the broken hammer? It was a rubber mallet. Nothing serious. Mr Barnes? All workplace accidents must be reported. Oh, come on. It's not worth making a fuss over. Oh, but I suppose it would be worth it if you had able-bodied workers. When you employ disabled people, there's a lot to consider, right? What, and that doesn't include the safety of the workers? Oh, yeah, of course it does. But I can't get bogged down with every little thing. I mean, it's just common sense. Look, WorkSafe was introduced for a reason. We'll have to contact them. He figured if the WorkSafe inspectors came in, they'd insist on them upgrading a lot of their equipment and they just can't afford it. So the safety rules get thrown out the window. A head came off a hammer. Get over it. Where's my report? Yeah, uh, it's coming. From where? The North Pole? Yeah. 
Ah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, who's our contact at work, so? Joe, um, he's just trying to keep his business running. By exploiting guys like Trevor and Glancy. All right, listen, I know some of the people on the board of the workshop. I'll give them a call and see what they've got to say about it. In the meantime, get your paperwork done. Here you go, mate. Ah, uh, great. One down, one to go. Hey, you know how you were talking about letting out the spare room? You still want it? I hadn't really thought about it. Why well, you got someone in mind? No, 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 no. I was just wondering. You hadn't mentioned it since. I'm not really looking for someone. Someone needed a place to stay. It'd be fine by me. Joe said you wouldn't want a girl living there. Why would she say that? No idea. I wouldn't care. That's what I said. Yeah. Hope there's no typos. Do you have a problem with me? Generally speaking, you're at this particular moment in time. I'd just like to know where I stand. So right now I've got a fine lines this brief for court, so yeah, you have been a pain in the butt, but generally, I don't have a problem with you. Great. Ben was uh, saying you're thinking of getting a housemate. Yeah, he was talking about that earlier. I mean, what made you think I didn't want a girl to move in? Did he tell you that? Yeah, wouldn't bother me. Oh, right. Uh, so you're fine with it then? Of course. Cool. <laughs> well, I guess we can sort out the details later. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Joe, what are you doing here? What, moving in? Didn't PJ tell you? No. Oh, typical. Where is he anyway? Don't tell me he's gone out. Yeah, he has. That'd be right. To get out of helping me move in, I bet. Uh, do you want to give us a hand with everything else in the car? I've still got stacks more at the Imperial. Thank you for everything, Chrissy. Oh, it's not going to be the same without you, mm. you know. Come and let me buy you a farewell drink, eh? Yeah. Or is that a celebratory drink, Chris? <laughs> I am a breeze. Thank you very much. Big pun? Oh, you had to report me, didn't you? You got me sacked. Our senior sergeant was the one who contacted the workshop board, Mr. Barnes, and WorkSafe. You bought that on yourself. Yeah, well, they went through the place with a magnifying glass. Closed it down. Blame me for all the problems. Well, if you can't keep a safe workplace... It's not easy trying to run a place like that in a shoestring, you know. Shoestring. I'll have another. No, you won't. You've had enough. Oh, well, I'll get myself maggot elsewhere then, shall I? I don't think I like the smell of your customers anyway. Good. Cheers. Oh. Morning. What are you doing here? I was going to answer the phone. Is anyone getting that? Oh, you two are full surprises. Well, I'll do it, shall I? What? Yeah. G'day. Hello, how long's... Oh, it only rang a couple of times before I came in. Yeah, out. for sure, I'll tell him. OK, bye. G'day. Hey. Those D24 has been a fire at the community house. Uh, oh. OK. I'll come with you. You're a dark horse, Benny boy. What? There's nothing going on between me and Ben. You said I could move in. When? Yesterday, in your office. I didn't realise you, you were talking about you. Oh, thanks. So it's all right for any girl to move in except me. Oh, I didn't say that. I mean, if you want to crash at our place for a couple of nights, that's I fine. I need somewhere but... to live, PJ. I'm sorry, Joe. Why did you say you don't have a problem with me when you obviously do? I don't. I mean, well, I, I didn't. Fireys were called at 3 a.m. There's no one inside. <laughs> Please tell me it was a gas leak or something. No, it was deliberate, PJ. An accelerant was used at the back door. <sighs> All right, organise a door knock. Yeah. One of the neighbours saw some hoons mucking around during the night. It wasn't hoons, it was the manager, Stephen Barnes. Look, the sack yesterday had been a nice one at the pub. Mm. Looks like he got his revenge. Spoke to Barnes's flatmate. He hasn't been home all night. Received that. His car is an 89 white Mazda 929. Uh, Rego Delta X-ray Golf 921. We'll keep an eye out for it. He's done a runner. Look, it doesn't exactly fit, does it? I mean, he's not about to rant and rave in front of a couple of coppers and then torch the place. He, he was angry. 
mean, plus he was planning on getting off his face. It doesn't equal clear thinking. Okay, okay, we'll check out some of the other pubs in town, all right? I suppose while we're there, I'd better see if they've got any spare rooms. What? What about the Imperial? Chris has already let out my room. Oh, Joe, I'm sorry. I, I really am, but I, I just don't think you're going to be very happy with Ben and I. I mean, we're, we're just very set in our ways. Ben is fine with it. You talked to Ben about this? Yeah, of course I did. Look, I'm not going to leave my knickers hanging in the shower, if that's what you're worried about. No, I'm not worried about that, but good. Well, I just don't understand why you're being so hypocritical about it. I'm not being hypocritical. I'm just being practical. I wouldn't have gone to all the effort of moving in if you just said no in the first place. Well, I didn't know I was saying yes. I didn't dare. The workshop all burnt down. Oh, yeah, I know, Clance. I know. It happened last night. Well, I finished work at the lollipop man, and now I have to go to work at the workshop. Well, Clancy, you're just going to have to go home. There's no work for you to do. Well, I always go to work after I finish being the lollipop man. Yes, well, this gives you time to spend with Leonie and baby Rachel, doesn't it? Leonie gone to stay at her auntie for a few days. Well, I do, Daniel Crawdon. Uh, well, I'm sure the cars need a wash. Yeah. All right, Clancy, why don't you help Constable Jones wash the cars for a while? Is that a real job? Yes, of course it is. Thank Daniel Crawdon. You're my good friend. All right, mate, come on, let's go. Okay. That'll keep him busy for now. What do we do after that? Oh, I'll think of something. Speak I see to Mount Thomas 900. Go to 2 local for 508. Mount Thomas 900 receiving. Go ahead, 508. Sarge, so, Stephen Barnes did a pub crawl last night. He was last seen leaving the steam packet at closing time. Did he indicate where he was going? No, but he's in no condition to drive. Uh, we're following his probable route from the pub back to his flat. I received that 508. Keep us posted. Oh, hang on. It's not him, is it? Mr. Barnes? Mr. Barnes? You all right? Doesn't smell like it. He's chucked everywhere. Oh, gosh. Come on, mate. Wacky, wacky. Come on. Hey, Joe. What were your movements during the early hours of last night? I can't remember. Well, we can't charge you with uh, drunk driving, so you won't incriminate yourself. Really? Well, we've got to catch you in the act. Uh, yeah, OK, all right, all right. Um, I went to a couple of pubs. I uh, headed home. I ran out of petrol. I got the can out of the boot and um, went looking for some more petrol. Where did this happen? There was no sign of your car between the pub and where we picked you up. I'm not sure. Well, I reckon we'll find your car close to the workshop. Where were you between 2.30 and 3 a.m. this morning? I don't remember. So it's perfectly possible that you did go to the community workshop and use the petrol to burn the place down? Why would I bother? Revenge for getting the sack? Oh, yeah. <laughs> if I did that every time I got the boot, there wouldn't be many places left standing. Well, I won't say I told you so. There's nowhere near the workshop. It's on the way. It's on the way to a lot of places. Where? Not another pub. We could take this road to his house. Yeah, right. Well, the keys are still in the ignition. Empty? Quarter of a tank. So much for his story. Well, the gauge could be faulty. Give it a go. fuel line could be blocked. He just assumed he'd run out of petrol because he was so drunk. Why are you so certain he's telling the truth? I'm not. The moment we can't prove this lying. Look, your problem is you can't see what's right in front of your face. The guy's got motive and his story doesn't check out. Ben, can I have a word, please? Everything all right? Yeah, wonderful. Mate, I really wish you'd asked me before giving Joe the go-ahead to move in. I didn't. I wouldn't do that. It's your place. It's your decision. Well, why is she there? I get if I know. It was a mix-up. But I have to say, mate, I can't see why you're making such a big deal out of it. <laughs> Me? I'm making a big deal about it. Why don't you just give it a go? Pay off your mortgage quicker. Look, it's too much working with her all day and having her around the house at night. We work together. That's different. We're blokes. What's wrong with having a girl around the place? You get low-fat milk in the fridge, nice soft dunny roll. Now, yeah, you wait until the arguments start about leaving the toilet seat up. <sighs> yeah. 
Hi, Detective PJ. Honorable Joan D. Dead, can you give me the key to the ID car so I can wash it and clean it? Uh, Clans, I, I take the car through the car wash. Dean, you crawled and did it, my job. I work here now. Clancy was at a loose end with the workshop out of action, so the boss gave him something to do. Well, well Clancy, just that I might need the car soon. But I've done all the other. Well, uh, you're going to have to go home, man. We've got nothing here for you to do. That did mean I'm getting the dark like Trevor did. No, no, no. Trevor? Hang on, Trevor, he's your friend from the workshop, isn't he? Yeah. Did he get the sack? Yeah. Mr. the barn said he wasn't doing his job right. How did Trevor feel about it? He got real up dead. Did a good job, eh? Yeah. But Barnes didn't sack Trevor. He just punished him by sending him home. If Clancy thought he was sacked, maybe Trevor did too. It gives him the same motive as Barnes. But it's not in Trevor's nature to set a fire. How do you know? PJ, that was the arson squad. They say that the accelerant used on the back door wasn't petrol. It was acetone. Well, that doesn't rule out Barnes. I mean, for all we know, he keeps acetone at the workshop. I doubt it. Well, he could get it somewhere. There was no trace of it in his car. I mean, why would he use that when, when petrol's cheaper and more effective? Hi, Mrs Harvey. G'day, Trevor. Sorry to bother you. It's about the fire. Um, do you know what time the fire started? Sometime before 3 a.m. Do you know something about it? Mrs Harvey? Why are you here? I heard Trevor get up at 2.15. And? And I heard him again at 3.30. Do you know if he actually left the house? I didn't think about it then. It wasn't until I heard it on the radio news that I realised what he must have done. Mrs Harvey, whoever started the fire used a special chemical. Acetone. We have cans of it in the garage. Left over from my husband's business. Acetones. Very dangerous. Got to be careful. Got to be careful, my dad said. Were you careful with it last night? It's very, very dangerous. Got to be careful. Did you go to your place of work at all last night? Well, I don't work there no more. Did you get the sack? Mr. Barnes told me I do too many wrong things. He said you're a waste of space, Trevor. Told me to go home. I want to work with my dad. I can't because... My dad's gone away. He has, mate. And then you went to work for Mr. Barnes and unfortunately you got the sack. Did that make you angry at all? I wanted to get him back. Trevor, did, did you set fire to the workshop last night? I set fire to the workshop with acetone. Got to be careful, it's very dangerous. Got to be careful, very dangerous. My dad said. What's going to happen to him, Tom? Well, it's early days yet. The, uh, the magistrate will decide. He's not going to go to prison? No, I think it's more likely that he'll go into some sort of uh, supported residential care. That won't be too bad, will it? No. In the meantime, you'll be able to take him home. No, uh, he's too excitable at the moment, Tom. I, I, can't, I can't cope with him. Is it really that bad? He's too strong. How long has he been like this? Since Gordon died. I just feel as if I'm letting Gordon down. No, three years on your own, it must be, must be very hard. I can't do it. I can't do it anymore. Jean, I had no idea. What? Why didn't you ask for some help? Trevor's my problem. I didn't want to bum him off to anyone else. 
I'm, I'm just so frightened of him, Tom. I don't know what he's going to do. I'm so frightened. Parish, can you get on to human services and ask him to find temporary accommodation for Trevor Holmes? I thought we were releasing him pending summons. Yes, but he can't go home. Well, why? We've been lucky so far, but next time he decides to burn down a building, someone could get hurt. Yeah, but his mum can look after him, surely. Parish, yeah. he's not a kid. He's a grown man who's proven to be very dangerous. I don't think but he's just dangerous. make the call. Try not to worry, Mrs Harvey. The case against him could be dismissed. Even though he confessed? Well, there's no physical evidence, so I should be lucky. Trevor, Wendy's found somewhere really nice for you to stay tonight. No, I want to go home with my mum. Oh, not tonight, Trevor. They're nice people. You'll like it there. No, mum, mum, mum. Trevor, mom, mom. Trevor, we talked about this before, remember? Now, be a good boy for Wendy, and I'll come and see you tomorrow. No, okay? I want to go home with you, mum. You can't, Trevor. No, don't make me go away. Trevor, you can't. Trevor, you can't. Come, come on, mate, let go. Trevor. Trevor, 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 Trevor you're hurting your mum. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> And so when you, when you squeeze this bit, what happens is the metal goes through and pushes the staple right through the paper and then it gets squashed up on this bit here and then and it the holds the paper together. You said constable, Joe. Surely the council has some sort of contingency fund for this kind of thing. Well, no, not really. That fund's for disasters like bushfires and storms, emergencies, you know? Clance? I only create. Hello, Clancy. Why don't you tell Chris uh, how you feel about the workshop being closed? I'm really duck, Danny Chris. I don't like it because I've got nowhere to go anymore. Well, that's a shame, Clancy. Why don't you tell Clance what you just told me about his future work prospects? Well, I will be making some phone calls to council and I'll see what I can do, Clancy. Yay! But uh, I can't promise any. Not left home, Clint? I want to go to Trevor. Actually, T Trevor's not at home tonight, mate. Why? Well, he's just staying somewhere else for a little while. Why? Because he said he lit the fire at the workshop. <laughs> no, it wasn't him. Um, no, I find it hard to believe too, Clance, but he said he did. That's real dilly. Trevor, real frightened of fire. Clancy is just looking after his mate, like he always has. One of the workers lit a fire in the waste paper bin and Trevor was cringing in the corner. He confessed that, didn't he? Yep. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was a fairly relevant piece of information, but I'm obviously wrong. No, no, no. It's not relevant. Not now. This is my space. My time away from police work. Excuse me. I should have known you wouldn't listen to anything I had to say. Those seem pretty relevant. I know, I know. Who left the dunny seat up? <laughs> Joe, the arson squad have already been through. Why don't we go to the back door? Who? Well, if it was Trevor, why the back way? Not to see. It was three o'clock in the morning. There was no one around. Oh, someone could have driven past. Do you really think Trevor's cluey enough to consider that? Well, even five-year-olds can be pretty sneaky when they're doing something wrong. Confirmation of Trevor Harvey's prints. Clear as crystal. What else do you see? Nothing. Exactly. Just two sets of prints on either side where Trevor handled it. None on the top where he would have opened it. So either Trevor wore gloves when he splashed it around. Or he's been set up. Now, the Asa Squad have confirmed the can definitely wasn't there when they searched. It's been planted later to incriminate Trevor. Trevor, have you seen this before? It's my dad's. Right. And this is what you used to set fire to the workshop? I don't know. 
Well, that's what you told us yesterday. Uh, yeah, that's right. What did you do with the can after you lit the fire, mate? I don't know. It's OK, just tell us what happened again. I want to see my mum. You went to the workshop in the middle of the night? Yeah. Then what, you went through the front door? You splashed the acetone around and then you lit the fire. Yep. Definitely the front door. I want to see my mum. Did anyone ask you to say all of this? Yeah, but if I tell, I'll get into big trouble. Oh, no, I'm in big trouble now. No, 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 it's, it's all right. You're out of trouble. You're out of trouble. Did Mr Barnes make you say you lit the fire? I want to see my mum. Go. Okay. Mrs. Harvey, thank you for coming in. Um, what's this about? Well, it's good news. Trevor didn't light the fire after all. But he said he did. We believe someone coached him to confess. Who? Well, I probably shouldn't say, but what's important is Trevor's not a danger to you or anyone. You can take him home. But, um... Well, I've cleared it with human services. It's what Trevor wants, isn't it? Time to go home with your mum. Sorry, mum. Mum? Mum? You what? Well, what's the problem? Trevor's home, everybody wins. Jean is afraid of him. She, she practically begged me to take him off her hands. But he didn't set the fire. Oh, forget the fire. This has been going on for years. Well, you saw the way he manhandled his mother yesterday. I thought... What if it's just a fraction of what he's capable of? I've uh, spoken to Stephen Barnes again. Did he make an admission? No. Yeah, but it's got to be him. Well, we can't prove it either way, can we? But he did say something interesting. On the night of the fire, Jean Harvey visited begged him not to sack Trevor. Well, she must have really valued those few free hours. She's not answering. What else did he say? Barnes told her the work safe was going to shut the place down anyway. What, and are they? I check it. It's a strong possibility. So Jean discovered that she's going to be stuck with Trevor permanently. But she wouldn't frame her own son. I mean, she wouldn't send desperate him to jail. Desperate people take desperate measures. You'd better get out there. Trevor? Trevor, is your mum there? Trevor? Mate, what's up with your mum? Go away! Joe! She's down, call the ambos, I'll check the back. Mount Thomas 508 to VKC. We need to come in, mate. Go to help away. your mum. No! 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 We just want to help. What's going on? He hasn't stepped out, has he? I don't know. Trevor? Trevor? It's Constable Joe. Just want to talk to you. Can we come in? Go away! Mount Thomas 508 to Mount Thomas 900. Mount Thomas 900, receiving, go ahead. He's got a knife and he's barricading himself in the living room. You, is Mrs Harvey all right? No sign either way. We can't get close enough. Wait, Sergeant Gallagher and Constable Jones are on their way. Maybe the extra police presence will bring him round. Or stress him out even further. Look, sit tight. There's somebody he might listen to. You right, Clarence? We explain what's going on. 
Thanks for coming, Clancy. No worried, Constable J. We just need your help in getting Trevor to come outside, OK? What are you going to do to him? Well, he won't get in trouble. It's, we need to help his mum, OK? OK. Trevor? Guess who's here? It's Clancy. Trev, really you'd me. Do you want to come out and talk to him? Come on, Trev. It okay? No, no. You, you come in here. No, I can't allow that. He would never hurt me. He could just come into this area. I'll protect him. Okay, make sure you do. Clance, don't go too close, okay? Okay. 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 I to come out now, Trev. No, oh, I don't want to go back to that place, Clancy. I know. You can come and stay at my house. I got a lot of people staying at my house. No, they're gonna take me back to that place. They won't take you back there, Trev. You stay at my place. It'll be good. We can make popcorn and stuff. Ask him how his mum is. How do you how do you mum Trev? She she told me to say that I did the fire. I never did it. She did it, and, and, I, and I, got, I, got, I got really mad with her. And any and now she's on the floor. She'll be all right though, Trev. Just open the door. She won't wake up, Clancy. Is she dead? Just open the door. Ask him how the grandfather clock works. How did the work? How did the grandfather... How did the grandfather clock work? How did it work? He just lift the weight up and wind it up. Ask him to show you. Show me! That's, that's it, Trevor. You, you can show Clancy the clock when you put the knife down. Just, just down on the floor, mate. Down the floor. Just down on the floor, mate. Just down the floor. It's, it's easy. All you've got to do is you've got to wind this bit here, and then what happens is this thing swings. No blood. Was she alive? Be waiting for the coroner? No, the Ambers have agreed to take it. Hey, where'd you come up with that clock idea? He's obsessed with mechanical stuff. Take my mum! Hey, hey, it's alright. Oh, I want my mum! Take right. my mum! I want my mum! My mum, Clancy, have taken my mum! I want my mum, The coroner said that Jean died of a massive heart attack. She went to a doctor months ago with chest pains, but went, never went back for follow-up testing. Bloody tragedy. So Trevor had nothing to do with it? Well, there were signs of a struggle that could have brought it on. Stupid, selfish woman. What? Too proud to ask for help. What was wrong with her? Did she think she'd live forever? I'm sorry, I've got to go. Thanks. Clance? Come on in. I just wanted to thank you for the day, Clance. You've been a great help. That the right thing you're crawling in? Where Trevor? Well, he's at the same place he stayed last night. But he didn't like it there. He can stay at my house. I bet he could and he can. 
Yeah, all right. Well, we'll have to see about that. Okay. I think I might have found you a job. Back at the workshop? Well, the board are talking about starting up another one, but in the meantime, there's a workshop at St David's that can give you and some of the others a job. And Trevor too? Well, yeah, if that's what he wants, maybe. You're a good friend, Clancy. Then you grow it in. Hey. Sorry if I'm invading your space. No, I just... Just thought you'd be at the pub, that's all. I thought I'd better find somewhere else to live. There's a few places here. I can have a look at them on the weekend. There's a nice one with um, polished floorboards. So. You can stay as long as you need to, you know that. Do you know what drove Mrs Harvey to plant that Estine can? Me. I told her that without hard evidence, Trevor's confession mightn't count for much. Joe, you just thought you were I was looking beyond my first instinct, just like you said. Good old Parrish always knows better than anyone else. You did your job. Yeah, I did a great job. Gave Trevor back to her. That was a bloody good idea, wasn't it? What a wonderful idea that was. You did a good job. Don't have to lie to me to make me feel better, all right? 